What's going on internet? IG back again today with another video and today it's all about rolling releases and the two of which that I've spent the most time with over the last couple of months, Solus and Manjaro. So today's video is going to be a well-spirited uh, debate as to who has the better structure for a rolling release. Now I realize that uh, again, a lot of this is going to come down to personal preference. Um, but Manjaro and Solus are both rolling releases that enjoy uh, a pretty wide user base. Um, I would definitely argue that as a, as a distribution, Manjaro has far more users uh, than Solus. I don't have any statistics to back that up, but that just seems to be from judging by the general buzz around the internet. Um, but Solus is definitely gaining a base as well. And both of them have a very uh, distinct view of what a rolling release should be. And so I really thought that it would be a great opportunity to dig into what makes these releases unique and maybe what um, each of them do better than the other. So without any further ado, and to try and keep it as quick and short and to the point as possible, this is Solus versus Manjaro. Okay, so here's how this is gonna work. I'm not gonna do any dumb scoring or anything like that, because again, this is so subjective. What I do wanna do is draw out some of the points that, uh, that distinguishes Manjaro from possibly other rolling releases and give you some ammunition as to why you might wanna use Manjaro. Then I'm going to give some criticisms of Manjaro and then I'm gonna swap over to Solus and cover the same with Solus. Um, so now I've got quite a few bullet points here that I'm gonna fly through um, as we go and I'm gonna try and stay on track as possible in terms of uh, in terms of making this video uh, relatively succinct so we're not stuck here for ages okay let's do it first of all um, the the first thing that Manjaro has going for it especially right out of the gate when you are looking for a new Linux distribution is the fact that it has a lot of desktop environments that are supported out of the box uh, meaning you can jump onto Manjaro's website um, you can see that not only do they have the official supports which uh, all the officially supported desktop environments, which are XFCE, KDE, and GNOME, uh, all of which are pretty high quality for what they're worth. You also have a vast array of community uh, of community releases, which support literally every desktop environment out there. So this is one of the most attractive things that Manjaro has going for it, is that it, you have, if you're looking for a rolling release that has your favorite desktop environment out of the box, then Manjaro is a great place to start. Now, the other thing when it comes to uh, uh, another great thing that Manjaro has going for it is the amount of packages that are supported uh, and the amount of software that's out there and available for Manjaro. Now, this boils down to two different things. Uh, first of all, the fact that Manjaro is uh, based on Arch in that, and again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and explain the architecture behind here, and I'll probably stick up a little helpful graphic here to, uh, to explain it a bit more as well. So when you have uh, Manjaro as a distribution, it is pulling packages from Arch. Now, there are almost stuff at being added to the Arch repositories almost daily, and it breaks and it's chaotic and, and it's a beautiful mess. So what Manjaro does is Manjaro feeds those packages from Arch, the daily Arch repository, into Manjaro Unstable, and then from Manjaro Unstable, if there are security patches that need to be uh, that need to be rolled out really quickly, then they will be fast tracked from Unstable straight through to Manjaro uh, the the proper Manjaro release. Otherwise. Every other package will go from the Manjaro Unstable to Manjaro Testing, where it will undergo a bit of uh, quality assurance. And uh, usually, I think the framework, uh, the time framework, is about two weeks. Um, it'll be uh, it'll be tested, and then it will be rolled into the proper Manjaro uh, repositories. Now, uh, this has uh, has a lot of uh, great benefits to the end user. Now, first of which is that being Arch. Um, being Arch based means that out of the box you already get a vast array of packages available to the user but it also means you get access to the Arch user repository uh, which again if there is ever a piece of software that is out there that you want to use or try or, and install on your system, then the Arch user repository is a community maintained uh, repository of basically installation scripts, which streamline the whole process of grabbing a random package or grabbing a tarball or whatever, and turning it into software that runs on your machine. Now, um, obviously the AUR does uh, does um, increase the, the 
chance of instability or, or potentially risky packages. So it's one of those use at your own risk type of things. But as, as a starter, there's pr basically all the software you could ever want or need within the AUR and within the typical, uh, within the classic Manjaro repositories. Okay, so plenty of software going for it. Now, also technical support for Manjaro because of the fact that there is quite a large user base out there, um, technical support is relatively good as well. Just by looking at their, uh, their welcome uh, splash screen, I guess you could say, um, you do have links to uh, their forums, their chat rooms, mailing lists, um, all of that kind of stuff. And, uh, and I've never not found a solution to an issue that I've had with Manjaro. And I think that's key to realize is that you probably will have issues at some point because this brings me to my next point. Stability is still something that is a bit of a gripe with some of the users of Manjaro. Now for me, I've been relatively lucky um, with my uh, uses of Manjaro. I typically stick to the desktop environment that I'm installing. I don't install a lot of other uh, cruft that could uh, conflict or anything like that on top of the standard um, desktop environment that I'm using. Um, but that's not to say that there are plenty of users out there whose systems do uh, break. The other thing that Arch really, uh, that sorry, Manjaro really has going for it is that it has a great, fantastic graphical uh, package manager in that when you want to add and remove software from your system, Pamac on the GTK based desktop environments and Octopi on the KDE uh, versions, I believe, uh, are some of the best graphical package management tools you can want. When it comes to a rolling release, you wanna have a really robust set of tools when it comes to managing those packages. Now, uh, what these different uh, graphical package, manager, package management uh, apps can do is uh, is hold different apps at a certain uh, at a certain release version they can roll back packages if the if a new update is not working for you um, there's just a lot of really robust tools in here that um, that you really need to be able to support a uh, a rolling release well and again this trend continues when it comes to the graphical tools that they have to not only manage your uh, your hardware, but also to manage your kernel and stuff like that. Now I mentioned this in the why Manjaro is so popular video that I did, um, and a lot of these still remain true. But here's where Manjaro does it uh, basically better than Solus, uh, is that they do have these graphical tools that provide a lot more granular control. It's not so much a switch as much as it is a plethora of options of what you might want to use in your system. And uh, again, this gives control back to the user and again this is going to be a trend that's going to emerge quite a lot is that when you're using Manjaro, Manjaro is the sort of uh, distribution that is going to give you all the tools and all the capabilities that you could possibly want or need to turn the operating system into whatever you want it to be. So whether you want to run a long-term support release kernel, whether you want to run a bleeding edge kernel, whether you want to run uh, free, free drivers, non-free drivers, uh, older versions, newer versions, it doesn't matter. Manjaro is going to let you do it and it's going to give you graphical tools to do that. And that's why I think a lot of people really love uh, Manjaro because of the, the control that it gives the user. With a distribution like Manjaro, when you can uh, when you can mess around this much with the system, you know without a doubt that at some point you're going to break something and you're going to need to know how to fix it. So I think that basically about covers uh, uh, Manjaro in terms of what it does well and definitely the critics uh, or the, the criticism that I would have about it would be uh, around stability and would also be around the fact that Manjaro doesn't seem to have a particular clear focus. It, it tends to be all things to all people and, uh, and as such uh, I think a bit of quality assurance gets lost in the process. So indeed there have been many happy stories of Manjaro users who have installed their distribution and, uh, and not look back for six, nine, 9, 12 months at a time uh, because it's just kept rolling and kept doing what it wants, uh, what the user wants them to do. And, uh, and I think Manjaro deserves some major props and, uh, and deserves a, a place among the best Linux distributions out there for the amount of control that it gives to the user and for the amount of fantastic uh, hardware support and graphical user interface tools to manage this distribution and turn a jack of all trades into something that is unique and personal to you.
So now we switch our attention to Solus. Now Solus as a project is a, it presents the Budgie desktop environment as its flagship uh, desktop environment. Um, that's the one that I have used most extensively with Solus. And, uh, and Solus is one of those projects that, uh, that has a very, a much more narrow focus and a much more, uh, a much more clear direction for how it wants the distribution to evolve and grow and what kind of need it suits. This is contrast very, very strongly to Manjaro, which is, uh, which is a distribution to suit all people and all needs, all desktop environments. And so the first way that you're going to notice, the biggest difference you're gonna notice between something like Manjaro and Solus, and again, this is gonna come down to your personal preference, is the curated package selection. Now, what I mean by that is that most visible to you as the end user of Solus, you are gonna notice straight away the, the, um, the difference in quantity of software available out of the box for Solus. So when you come into, let's say graphics, for example, you come in here and you realize that there's actually a pretty short list of software that's available in the repositories in the software center. Now, the software that is in here is well packaged, well supported, up to date, uh, high quality and well tested. But there is not nearly the same amount of software in sheer volume as there would be in Manjaro. And chances are, if there's a random piece of software uh, that's floating around on the internet somewhere that you want to try out and run for yourself, uh, you either have to compile it from source or you put in a request for their package management system. Now, here we come to a pointy ended stick at both ends. If you want a particular piece of software included in Solus, then you can come into their, uh, their website and request that package, but you have to give a good argument as to why it should be included including the name of the package, the home page, why it should be included in the repository, uh, what sort of licensing it has, uh, how many users you anticipate will use the software, all of that kind of thing. And that all helps to keep the quality control of the packages in the repositories uh, to a high standard. Now, I would say for, for me personally, um, while there have been times where I haven't been able to find the software that I want, there is so much high quality software in the software center in Solus and it works so beautifully with the OS that I don't actually mind that there's not as much software available. Um, I'm pretty set in my ways in terms of the apps that I like to use and, uh, and usually they're pretty available on no matter what platform I'm using. But if you are somebody who really loves to tinker and you are a developer, then this could be a pain in the butt for you. So keep that in mind that the package selection is, is very curated. You do have support for snap packages and flat pack, uh, but only on the terminal. And this brings us into our next point. That is that not only uh, do is the whole Solus um, OS a lot more uh, streamlined, there are not as many graphical user interface tools or GUI tools to be able to manage the system. So what do I mean by this? I mean, when you go searching for settings, you're going to get the, the classic GNOME settings and you're going to get Budgie's desktop settings to customize the user interface. There are not many tools on Solus that you can use to customize things like what kernel you have installed or the hardware and all that kind of thing. Now, while those tools do exist, like for example, Dooflicky is the driver management. It's very much a, a binary toggle. You either, you either are running proprietary drivers or you're not. There's no sort of configuration there. And the same would hold true, I think, for, uh, for packages in that the software center is your package manager and the only way that you can get more granular control with that is by using a, a command line or using a terminal. Now, there are plenty of great tools that, uh, that are available for Solus that you can use in the command line to manage the system. But again, from a graphical user interface point of view, the software center is in a bit when it comes to package managers. You've either got to love it or that's kind of it. You got to learn the command line. Uh, for me, I, I don't mind it at all. Okay, that's enough about the software center and that's enough about uh, terminal stuff. What I do want to say and what I want to address now is the architecture of Solus and how it functions because I think this is an interesting differentiator between Solus and Manjaro as rolling releases. 
Okay, so taken from their blog post, which by the way, um, I, I, another thing that I do appreciate and I think users appreciate about Solus is the fact that the uh, development process and the goals and uh, and all of that kind of thing for Solus are very, very visible and transparent. Okay, so they, they unpack quite a few things that make their distribution different uh, to uh, other Linux di distributions out there and they particularly address some of the controversial decisions that they've made and some of the reasons why that those decisions were made. Things like um, no DKMS or basically no kernel module support built into the kernels and they address this using um, very specific tools um, such as the uh, CLR boot manager and also what was the other one uh, usysconf I believe it's called give me a second and this is all in an attempt to and you can again come down to the the bottom of this post and it uh, and it outlines a lot of what Solus is trying to do saying that when they attempt to fix a problem in the system they're going to try and fix it once and for all instead of uh, simply giving a patch approach now how this works itself out is uh, again having a completely stateless uh, configuration system so that means that there are there are back-end tools that intelligently manage uh, any configuration that needs to be done in the system. This is this is uh, so they want to be able to avoid conflicts between different configurations that maybe the user might set or maybe GUI tools are on behalf of the user as an admin might set and uh, and e ending up uh, messing up the system and which we've seen this happen time and time again on rolling releases. So basically they have uh, they have tools that do all of this on behalf of the admin and uh, but at the same time do take away a bit of the granular control that users might, uh, that tinkerers might want. But it does mean that if, if something does break, because you're using, uh, you've got something else handling all of this configuration for you, it does require a few more steps in the process. Okay, so back to uh, the list of, of things that uh, Solus claims it makes itself unique. It states here at the end that the OS should know how to look after itself, um, that the that the that it should stay out of the user's way, it should facilitate and not hamper the user, uh, and that ultimately it should be safe, reliable, and transparently enable workloads for the user. And, uh, and I guess the process that they're constantly doing is uh, looking at ways to be more efficient and effective as a distribution. Now, the reason why I dive into all this stuff is because Solus has the liberty of being a completely independent um, distribution. And again, that feeds into pretty much everything else I've talked about so far. You get a distribution that is, in my opinion, more responsive, more stable, and better performing than Manjaro in almost every aspect. But it means you get not as many desktop environments. At this point, officially, you get Budgie, Gnome, and Mate. Um, and you don't get as many GUI custom tools. Um, you do get a very intelligent architecture, including uh, kernel management, packaging, uh, driver management, um, and again, that whole stateless configuration that I was talking about. But I guess that the subtotal of that, that all boils down to a system that, is, that runs very well in the long term. Now, as a rolling release, uh, for me personally, in for, for my needs, and I want to be very clear about that, I prefer Solus as a rolling release. And in this comparison, Solus comes out on top for me, and that's why I'm using it as as a, as the system right now. Now, would that change if there were significant issues with Solus? Absolutely, because the the help isn't as available simply because they don't have the the, the user base. Uh, and that was a big issue for me uh, before with the prior hardware that I was running and that's why I stopped running it. As of now, that's not really a problem. So I enjoy running it. Um, the budgie desktop is is clean, modern, very functional. It gets out of the way um, and, uh, and it's responsive. And so I'm happy with that. Um, but of course you can find the budgie desktop system on the on Manjaro as well. So the reasons that I choose to use Solus is because of the fact it's very focused, curated, and uh, and custom built by a development team, as opposed to something which is all things for all people, allowing you to make the customizations yourself. So at the end of the day, it's a very tough distinction to make, and it depends what kind of user you are and what you're using your computer for. So what did you think? Did I leave anything out? Let me know in the comments below. I know this has been a long one, but hopefully you've enjoyed it. Uh, and uh, and let me know if there are other distributions that I should uh, that I should run comparisons against. For some reason, you guys love uh, seeing comparisons. So let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you all in the next video. Peace out, ladies and gentlemen.